Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the 2021 Virginia gubernatorial election. So before we get started, I know I haven't been posting as much. Um, I've worked on something else. I've been editing another documentary style video, which I hope will be out soon. Um, I also got a new microphone, um, so that's fun. I hope the sound quality is a little better. I was happy with the sound quality before, but this should take it to the next level, and I do hope that uh, y you guys start to notice the difference. The, the, this mic is actually super cool. It's it's I posted on Twitter a few days ago, but it's the uh, Blue Yeti in or I don't even know if it's Blue Yeti. I think it's just the Yeti microphone. I, it's it, it's not blue. It's a black microphone, but um, it allows me to mute myself, adjust the volume whenever I want. So it's a pretty cool microphone, and I can uh, you know. Uh, if you want to do a brief test here, um, I hope this doesn't sound too bad, but I can I can adjust the volume like this, I can make it really loud like this, or I can make it a little quieter like this, so um, I'm just going to put it back here, but um, yeah, so today we're going to be looking at the 2021 Virginia gubernatorial election, and uh, this is a race that is, is going to be quite interesting to watch on November 2nd, you know, we're about a month away, and um, I am hoping uh, that this race uh, does shape out to be interesting because, you know, for, from my standpoint as someone who does this for not a living but for my uh, main job right now you know uh, it's I, I I'm interested to see uh, how this race pans out and I do want to see an interesting race because it gives me more to cover so for some background Terry McCauley is the former governor of Virginia so Virginia has a very strange rule where if you or your governor like you know you, you can be governor for as many times as you want but you cannot serve consecutive terms so in 2017, uh, Ralph Northam defeated Ed Gillespie, uh, Ed Gillespie in uh, this race, and Northam, you know, pretty standard Democratic politician, you know, well liked by most Democrats, pretty standard Democrat. But before him, Terry McAuliffe was the governor, and he beat Ken Cuccinelli in that race. So um, McAuliffe has been a Democratic politician in Virginia for a while, and you know he's been their governor before. So Virginians, in a way, they know what they're getting. They they know McAuliffe, for, you know, quite well as a you know average uh, you know, average establishmentarian Democrat. And they kind of know what they're getting with Terry McAuliffe. Now, the Republicans, they have been shut out of the Virginia governor's mansion last time they won a governor's race in Virginia was 2005 war. Just look at the coalitions. Nova, it was a lot less red. Like, even in 2013, which was, you know, the Democrats won. These Nova counties up here, they were a lot less, uh, you know, they were a lot less Democrat or a lot less Democratic than, than they are now. You know, that, that's mostly because of the uh, D.C. suburbs are expanding. And you have, you know, just to kind of do a brief crash course, I'm sure many of many of you know what I'm about to say here, but the Washington, D.C. is up here. And so the suburbs of Washington, D.C., you know, D.C. is a very liberal city. that It's over 90 percent Democratic. The suburbs of D.C. that are, you know, you know, they're very diverse, but you have white voters who in the past have been Republican. A lot of them have college degrees. A lot of them are in uh, high penny industries. And voters with college degrees are overwhelmingly, uh, they're overwhelmingly liberal. So. They're coming out, they're voting for Democrats, and they're shifting states like Virginia that used to be red. 20 years ago, Virginia was a red state. Now it's a by state that Joe Biden won by double digits. That's historic. Joe Biden become, became the first Democrat to win Virginia by double digits since Lyndon B. Johnson in 1964. That is insane. It has been like 60 years since uh, since a, a Democrat won Virginia by, by the amount that uh, Joe Biden won it by. And it was only because of a 44-state landslide. Lyndon B. Johnson won, you know, he, he won 1964 against Barry Goldwater, and he won 44 out of 50 states. The Democrats are going to come nowhere near close to replicating that any time in probably my lifetime, to be completely honest with you. And uh, right now, they're, they're winning Virginia by the margins they were winning by in that year. So, it, you know, the coalitions are vastly different. Like, if I want to pull up the county maps, which I'm going to do, the coalitions would look very different. There would be counties that are red, counties that are blue that would be different. But the suburbs up here of, of uh, Northern Virginia, Nova, they're expanding. They're getting bluer and bluer. Just take a look at, you know— Right here, we have some light blue counties up here. Going over to 2020, we're getting a lot uh, darker a shade of blue and then this county over here, I forget the name of it, but it's a little bit lighter of a shade of red. Now, as I said, 2009, the Democrats picked up that seat, or no, excuse me, uh, my bad. 2009 was the last year they won. 2005, the, the, the GOP, I believe, uh, lost that race. But um, 2009 was the last time that the, that the Democrats lost Virginia, and you know, you know, they did well in the cities, they did well in some of those rural uh, counties up here. Again, I, I'm not and like I'm not gonna pretend like I know the name of this county or these counties. I know this is Roanoke or no, that's Charlottesville. I, I believe this is Roanoke. Like, uh, no, I don't even know. I, I, I do not know like I do not know Virginia geography as 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 well as I know other geography. Mostly because Virginia was not a swing state in 2020, so I didn't pay too much attention to it. But the Nova suburbs, what I do know is that these areas were a lot less 
uh, blue. And, you know, that's because uh, Bob McDonald did a lot better with white college-educated voters than, you know, say, Ken Cuccinelli or, say, Ed, uh, Ed Gillespie. So that is really what's turning Virginia away from Republicans. You know, it, it, Donald Trump, did act, he did better than John McCain in a lot of rural regions in the state. He did better than John McCain in uh, the exurbs of Roanoke, the exurbs of Charlottesville. But the issue that the Republicans have is that Northern Virginia, as well as some other regions, but mostly Northern Virginia, is just shifting away from them, and it's going to continue to shift, to shift away from them. Glenn Youngkin, I, I think he's actually a strong candidate, and I'll explain why in a second. But he's not going to be able to revert a nor- Northern Virginia to what it was 10 years ago. It's just not possible. Unless the Republicans can get a time machine going back to 2010, and they clone Mitt Romney, they're not going to be winning uh, Northern Virginia. And, you know, th- there are people on Twitter who are going to tell you otherwise, but I'm telling you right now, that if Glenn Youngkin can come back and win Fairfax County and win Northern Virginia, I'm going to be very, very surprised. Now, to take a look at 2017, which was the most recent gubernatorial election, as you can tell, Virginia has off-year elections, which are good and bad, bad for turnout reasons, good for my boredom, because I can get very bored in politics easily. Um, You know, I've actually, in the past, just wanted to just quit politics entirely, because it's like, you know, it's such a a burden on my shoulders really you know and for all of you guys like politics is stressful it's not i this is not the hobby that i, that I would choose um but you know uh, anyways not to go into that uh, tangent but 2017 uh I, I i don't think that ralph northam won virginia beach joe biden was the first democrat to win virginia beach uh in i think since 1964 as well at the presidential level i don't know about ralph northam in 2018 he could have or 20, 2017 he could have um, I know Clinton didn't win in 2016, but I, you know, Nor- Northam could have. I'm really not sure. I guess that he would have narrowly, narrowly lost it. But you know, if he won, I wouldn't be surprised. It's, you know, give it, like, like he only won by a point less than Joe Biden. So if he uh, did end up carrying Virginia Beach, I would not be surprised. But Democrats have been improving in Virginia Beach, as I mentioned, they've been improving in Nova suburbs. But you've been talking about that for like this entire video. But in 2022, I think that we're going to see a bit of a reduced margin. This is for a few reasons. So Terry McCauley. He's a very average candidate for, for Virginia. He's not going to alienate a ton of Democrats. He's also not going to appeal to a ton of Republicans or conservatives. Independents are going to break pretty even, I think, maybe a little bit towards Youngkin. But uh, really, the issue that the Democrats have in this race is that Glenn Youngkin, I think, is just a stronger candidate. I get that the Terry McCauley is, is running in a likely Democrat state, but Joe Biden is, is at not a very popular time in his presidency right now, just to you know pull that up. I know people are going to debate with me in the comments about that, but you know I'm someone who likes to look at the numbers, and I like to, you know, do the best I can to analyze objectively. You know, either, or earlier in Biden's presidency, he might have been popular. Back in the spring, I think he was at a good period. You know, I, I think his approval peaked somewhere in mid-April. And right now, 48, 48.7% of Americans disapprove of him compared to 45% who approve of him. Now, better than Donald Trump, I'll say that. He, he's doing a little better than Donald Trump was, just to... Uh, I don't know where Trump was. I just want to see um, where Trump is. Here we go. Oops, I was looking at Clinton. But, you know, right now... Uh, at this point in time, Trump had a 38.5% approval rating. Biden right now has a 45% approval rating. So, you know, it's not uh, not a lost cause for sure. I think Biden can still win re-election if he runs, but, you know, three years away. And for right now, uh, we're looking at 2021. And Joe Biden, I, he's still, I would say, still more popular in Virginia than he is nationwide. Virginia is a state that's a little more liberal than the average uh, American. You know, Joe Biden won Virginia by 10. He won the, the national popular vote by 4.4%. So, you know, it would make sense that he's a little more popular in Virginia than he is in America as a whole. But he's still weighing down Democrats nationwide. He's still less popular in Virginia now than he was in 2020, or at least the numbers seem to be pointing towards that. So I'm certainly going to say that Joe Biden is not picking a very convenient time for his slump. You know, like like if he slumped maybe in, you know, he's right now had a slump of about two months maybe. Maybe a little less. Around, let's just say two months, and say his slump goes to the end of the year. That'll be a five months or four, four month stretch from mid August to the end of December. If he had that slump, maybe in you know earlier in March through July, it would have been it would, it would have been much more convenient for his party. If that one random special election, New Mexico might have been a little closer. But uh, really, he's right now. What he's doing is he is. Uh, weighing down Democrats nationwide, they're not as popular as they were a year ago right now, at least in the polls, and that's hurting Terry McAuliffe in Virginia, and I don't think that's denying that. I'm not saying he's not favored, I'm not saying that he's 100, I'm not saying that he's the first thing to lose this race, but he's not doing, Joe Biden is not doing his party any favors right now, and I'm not saying, you know, actually I shouldn't say Joe Biden, I should just say that uh, the uh, things that are going on in America right now are not helping Democrats. Right now, the uh, Af- the Afghanistan withdrawal not very popular, no matter what you think uh, personally. Not a very popular thing. 
and um, you know the Delta variant. I hope is I I, I believe it peaked in mid September. I hope it uh, gets better, but it's still never good to have a crisis as as a president that has been going on for you know now well over a year, and it's gonna probably be two years uh, next spring. So. Um, Joe Biden is certainly not a, not, not a very popular point in his presidency. I think he'll recover to a certain extent, but right now he did not pick a very popular time to have his slump. But, yeah. Now, for Terry McAuliffe, he doesn't have... To, he kind of has to play defense. He's There's not really a scenario where Steve McAuliffe out, like, outperforming Joe Biden. It's possible. I said that about Newsom in his recall. I said I don't think Newsom can outperform Biden. He ran, you know, basically even with Biden, he ran a little bit ahead, you know, he ran a little bit ahead of him in some cases, but I, do, I don't really see McAuliffe outperforming Joe Biden. And, you know, this is because Joe Biden did quite well in Virginia. Like I said, he flipped Virginia Beach, became the first Democrat to do that. He flipped, or he did, you know, he did very well in Nova, better than my expectations, and he did, you know, solidly in, you know, those other cities, whether it be um, Manassas or uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay, uh, Roanoke, Charlottesville. He, you know, he did uh, well in, in, in a lot of areas. And Macaulay, if I, like, I just don't think he's going to match that. You know, he's a decent candidate. He's not going to bungle this race for Democrats, but... I think he's going to win, but I just don't think he'll do as well as Joe Biden in a lot of areas. So my projection for right now, as of uh, a month away, October 2nd, I would say that Macaulay is going to win by 5 or 6%, which would be a reduced margin from 2020, but still a solid victory for him. You know, there are people who are expecting it to be very close, but I just don't think it's going to happen with polarization. And I think Glenn Youngkin, uh, Macaulay has basically tied him to Trump. H- his whole campaign is just Cl- Glenn Youngkin supports Donald Trump, you don't vote for him. And, you know, that's not a bad strategy. Virginia is a democratic state, but... Now, Glenn Youngkin has, you know, he's addressed that, and I think he's done a pretty good job of that as well. You know, during the debate, he said, are you just going to tie me down? You know, he said something along the lines of, try not to talk about Donald Trump, let's talk about the issues. And, you know, I think there are voters that are going to, uh, you know, look like that. Now, is it enough to sway the election to, to, to Glenn Youngkin? I don't think so. I don't think he's going to win. But as of right now, I think he's in a decent spot. He's doing a little better than I thought. Um, but, um, yeah. So, right now, I would say that we're going to see a 5 to 6% victory for Terry McCauley. Could change. I'll definitely do at least one update video, probably two or three actually. I'll say at least two, probably one the day of, one next week. Yeah, maybe like one in a week or two, and then one on like the twenty. Like let's just say pulling random dates, uh, the twelfth. Let's just say October twelfth, October twenty fifth, and then November second for our three videos in this. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for a uh, doc- documentary coming out soon. But I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below what you think about this race, and I'll see you all in the next video.